presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, two ways to make your slides loop in Pro Presenter 7. Hi, and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you're really excited to get an announcement loop going before church and just have it keep going and going until you need to change it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or leave a comment below. One of the great things about ProPresenter is its flexibility, and this is no exception to that rule. You see, in ProPresenter 7, we have an additional way to make slides loop that we didn't have in ProPresenter 6 and older versions. And this way is even easier. So I'm going to show you that one and then refresh your memory about the original way, just in case you need to do it a little bit differently. So let's head over to my computer and take a look. So here we are in ProPresenter. Let's first off uh, create a new presentation. You'll remember a presentation is just a document in ProPresenter. So I'm going to call that uh, slide loop. I could call it announcements or whatever made sense to me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, well, I'll just put that in the youth folder here and click new. So, yeah, it's going to want, I've already created one, so let me create a new one. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to put slides into it. So, I have already brought in some slides from uh, our friends over at Church Motion Graphics. So I just just click this little plus button down here and from Finder and navigated to where those are. So that's just review. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight all of them and just drag and drop all of them there. Actually what I should have done was put them... oops afterwards so that it created one for each one here and we've got our slides now to make them loop well let me start with the easy way you see this arrow uh, icon right here if I mouse over it and leave it it should say slideshow so I'm gonna click on that and let's make it not five seconds not ten seconds let's make it seven so I click on custom and type in the number seven and hit OK. And now it should be, let me go ahead and put it over to the main out. Yep. So now we should see it advance. Watch down here. This will tell you how much longer is left on the particular slide before it advances. So that's really all there is to it. But Maybe you don't want them all to have the same uh, time. Well, you could go and add a go to next timer on uh, one in particular if it was just one. But what if you have just all kinds of uh, different times? So instead of that, first I'm going to turn that off and select it to none. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight all of them, right click, and select go to next timer. So let's select seven seconds just to get it started and now I'm gonna go to the very last one and again select go to next timer and add a loop to beginning action on that. So we click on that and now when I do the exact same thing you'll notice that this advances here and it does it here and then I'm just gonna click on that to speed things along we find that it does the same thing exactly but notice that I can see how much time each of these has on it and if I wanted this one to be up for five seconds I could right click uh, go to the go to next timer on it specifically and just type in five and if I wanted this one to be 10, I could right click, go to the go to next timer, and type 10. 
So in that way, it will uh, automatically advance after 10 seconds on this one, 5 seconds on this one, and 7 seconds on that one. So you have maximum flexibility. I will tell you one other thing. Um, a lot of times people will put in a video. So if I put in uh, this video, let me stick that right after Easter. Okay, first off, notice that it has the icon on top of the little box. That indicates that it is a foreground video. With foreground videos, the go to next timer doesn't indicate how long you want the entire video up. So if I put 30 seconds in here, because this is a 30 second video, um, that it would pause at the end and then wait an additional 30 seconds. We don't want that. What we want to do, right click, add a go to next timer. And for that one, we're going to put zero. So what that does is it says when this is over, I don't know if it, here, let me go ahead. I'm going to trigger it again just to make sure. When this is over, that's how long after the video is over before it goes to the next thing. And you'll notice it did exactly what you expected it to do. I have a background video right here. Let me put the background video right there. Yeah, notice that it has this background. So if I right click and add a go to next timer on a background video of let's say zero seconds then when it gets to this here I'll advance this here it's gonna just blink and go on see how it did that that's because it's a background so uh, the slide kind of ignores the background for timing sake so if I wanted this to be up there for let's say seven seconds in that case I would need to um, change the go to next timer to seven. So despite the fact that this is a 30 second video, it will only stay up for seven seconds. So I click on that and we'll notice that we have plenty of space here, but this advances and bam. So that's something that you need to know when it comes to adding videos into uh, your slide loop. Um, one other thing, and this is only appropriate on uh, ProPresenter, I think it's 7.5 and newer. It might be 7.4 and newer. Before that, if you had a foreground video, if you had audio playing from the audio bin, it would just get rid of the audio. A lot of people didn't like that uh, when they played a foreground video. So if you are on an older one, I have a tutorial for that. So I'll link that below the video. But if you don't, then <clears throat> this is what I would do is I would go to, if you're on one of the newer versions, go into preferences and then I think it's under advanced. Yeah, so here it says audio playback. So if you're playing audio, what do you want to happen? Here we're talking about on the presentation layer, so the slides layer. Audio layer is cleared for all media. Do you want it to just make the audio go away? Or do you want to do one of these other things? You want it to ignore foreground media? Do you want it uh, cleared if the media has audio? Or do you want it to pause and resume if the media has audio? So. Um, this could pause and resume for all media, whether it has audio or not, or pause and resume if it has audio. So just choose the appropriate thing. So if you want it to pause when it gets to the foreground video, play the foreground video, and then unpause when it gets to the next slide, that's the choice that I would select. And by the way, you've got that for the announcements layer as well. So that is how that's how you can add um, a slide loop to your presentations in ProPresenter 7. If you like this content, I know that you'd like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. So if you haven't already, go ahead to 
tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Give me your name and email address so I can create a login for you. And you can have free access to the ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.